Let me discuss now about two important pumps, centrifugal pump and the reciprocating pump. The centrifugal pump comes under the class of dynamic pumps. It has a set of impellers within a casing. It has a suction input pipe where the water is admitted in and a delivery pipe where the water goes out. It's called the discharge of the fluid or the water. The operation is based on the centrifugal force. This is rotating at high speed. The, va the, uh, the vacuum a pressure difference that is created due to the high speed rotation sucks in the water and it roots the water towards the center and because of the centrifugal force it is pushed out so out into the outlet and uh, as a result a pressure difference is created vacuum is created which will suck in more water and so on it goes so higher the speed impeller speed larger the pressure difference and then more the discharge so this is how it goes on let me plot on the x-axis discharge rate or the flow rate and on the y-axis head or the pressure. Now the static characteristic curve in the hydraulic domain is something like this at a particular given speed. If the speed is reduced you will see the discharge static characteristic curve like this. Further reduction in the speed you may see something like this. So as the speed is increased in this fashion, omega, angular speed is increased in this fashion, you will see the static, uh, family of static characteristic curves for the pressure versus discharge rate in this fashion. The torque felt on the shaft of the motor will be something like this. And why is it like that? Observe that I will mark these points here. Now these points are the best efficiency points as indicated in the data sheets of the uh, pumps. What it means is that when, when the head is zero, which means that there is uh, uh, no uh, hydraulic pressure difference needed, then the hydraulic power is zero. When the flow uh, along this axis, when the flow rate is zero, even then the hydraulic power is zero. So somewhere in between the hydraulic power is maximum. So these are the points where you have the maximum hydraulic power. And those are the operating points at which the efficiency would be maximum. So therefore, uh, it is uh, uh, recommended that you operate the centrifugal pump at these points of best efficiency points. And therefore, if you plot the locus of that, the torque that should be seen by uh, the shaft of the motor will be something like this. So this torque is uh, proportional to omega square. It is having a, a square angular frequency uh, dependency. So some important points. Suction head should be less than 10 meter because by uh, by pressure suction you cannot have uh, greater than 10 meters. In practice less than 6 meter is what you may achieve because of friction losses. Priming is needed. You need to fill up the centrifugal pump with water first and then uh, switch on the motor. The shaft torque as seen on the shaft of the motor is proportional to omega square. That is this particular uh, torque as a function of omega. Head is dependent on flow rate and speed. At speeds below threshold, no water is pumped. So what it means is that this portion here, this new characteristic, static characteristic which I have drawn, 
below this threshold uh, everything goes into friction loss no water will be pumped so this is at threshold speed this characteristic is at threshold speed so now let me just discuss with you about two important aspects there is something called the single stage and multi stage most of the pumps especially for low heads we use a single stage pump which means the impeller is a single impeller so if this is the casing the impeller is housed within the casing like this this is where the water is admitted in we call this one as admission and the water exits like this so when the water is rooted admitted through this rooted like uh, through at this through, through this impeller the impeller is rotating at high speed and the, the centrifugal forces uh, force the water out through this outlet so if i draw the direction it looks something like this so this is the casing and this is the impeller now water is admitted only from one side it is called the single admission you also have double admission so it will look like this the impellers look like this if i draw the casing it will look like in this fashion so water can be admitted this way and this way and then water water comes out because of a pressure difference between this center and the outer periphery water is pushed out by the centrifugal force now the direction of flow will be like this this is double admission now double admission of course is more advantageous because the water getting admitted through this port and water admitted getting admitted through this port will balance the impeller wheel so therefore the double admission is uh, more advantageous from that point of view it has uh, um, uh, uh, reduced uh, impact on the bearing there is also multi stage when you have very deep uh, well uh, very, very deep wells and then in, in the case of submersible pumps where you have to pump to a very great head uh, especially from bore wells like the bore well example that we discussed multi stage uh, impellers uh, are normally used in the pump so th th then it is called a multi stage pump let me just show you how the uh, schematic looks like this is a single stage impeller this is a single stage impeller i will i will place one more impeller set like this I'll place one more impeller set like this so if i keep on placing impellers like this this becomes multi stage so this is the admission point this is the single admission point where water is admitted rooted in and it is rooted as it goes in and it is rotating centrifugal force forces the water to the out outlet of the impeller so it goes out of the impeller like that and then the water is routed by a diffuser and it comes uh, in uh, uh, into the second impeller it is admitted into the second impeller and from here it again through centrifugal force goes out and then it is admitted to the third impeller and so on and finally to the discharge point like the single admission multi stage you have the double admission multi stage let me show you two stage double admission so if i take, say this is where it is admitted it will go in on both sides then it will come out through this it is rooted and then goes into uh, the double admission impeller of the next stage goes out so on so in this way the double admission multi stage uh, impeller works now actually if you see there is a pressure p or uh, p1 at this at this point and then p2 at the periphery of the impellers so 
P1 minus P2 is what is forcing the water to the periphery. Likewise, here also you have P1 and P2 and the pressure P1 minus P2, the delta P is forcing the water because of the rotation and the centrifugal force. Now here in the multi-stage you see the pressure starts adding up. So there is P1 and then is P2 and here at P2 it is admitted into the next impeller stage. P3 must be great. Uh, uh, P2 will force into P3. P2, P3 is the pressure at the admission of the third stage. P4 so on. So actually the delta P keep adding up. Likewise in the case of the double admission. You have P1, P2, P3, so on. So um, because of the addition in the power, uh, addition in the pressure, there is sufficient differential pressure from the first to the last stage, which will uh, pump the water to much greater heights. So uh, that's how the uh, multi-stage pumps st uh, start working and generally used in uh, submersible pumps in uh, bore wells uh, type of applications. Let us now see how we interface the PV to the pump. So we have the PV and at the output terminals of the PV we have CT that is the buffer capacitor and from the terminal I will make a chopper which means there is a switch and the diode. That's it. I am not putting a DC-DC converter meaning an inductance and a capacitance. I am just having a chopper to switch. The motor, DC motor itself has inbuilt energy storage, has inbuilt inductance. Okay, let me see what happens. Now the motor has a series winding resistance RA, it's a small value. Then a series inductance LA magnetizing inductance, all, all the inductance lumped together, I am putting it as LA and the motor itself which is a controlled voltage source like that. Now this motor is a permanent magnet DC motor, so you need a DC drive. The shaft of the motor is coupled to another shaft, the shaft of the centrifugal pump like this. So the centrifugal pump has inlet and the outlet and this is the impeller with the veins like this. So this is the system. We have VT here, terminal voltage and across the armature of the motor I am having VA. This is RA, LA, this is the back EMF EB. On the mechanical side I have a developed torque TD, that is omega speed of the shaft. Now we know that TD is equal to TD the developed torque has to supply overcome J D omega by DT any inertia reflected up to this point on the shaft into D omega by DT change in speed plus there is bearing on this side and on this side there will be bearing friction B into omega plus the load torque the hydraulic load of the centrifugal pump we saw in the uh, characteristic just before TL and what is TL okay let me put it down JD omega by DT plus B omega plus some alpha omega square we said TL was proportional to omega square now this is the kind of uh, uh, load that this DC motor will see and then it has to develop the torque to overcome all these torque components now how does this operate, let us see, this is switching on off on off which means the voltage here will be either connected to VT or it will be zero because it will be free wheeling. So when it is on there will be a current flow like this through this and then it will start driving the motor. It will have uh, armature current, armature current will produce the torque because torque in the DC motor is proportional to the armature current and this torque will cause the uh, shaft to rotate and uh, this omega 
will uh, cause pressure difference head and which will cause a flow of water and therefore the discharge rate or the flow rate comes into being and uh, because of this omega you will have a back emf induced here and uh, this back emf is going to um, uh, oppose the uh, flow of the current and then it will all settle at some steady state value let me just draw the important waveform so that we get an idea of insight into the operation so this is time axis I will see two waveforms VA and the current IA through the motor so let me divide them into time zones VA now do, this is during the on time off time on time off time so during the on time VT will come directly at this point so VA is VT during the off time VA is zero because the diode is freewheeling. Any current flowing through this, the inductor will freewheel like that. So on it repeats, P, uh, um, period after period. Next, we have this duty cycle, that is this, this BJT or MOSFET or IGBT is switching on for DTS time period and switching off for 1 minus DTS time period and the average value of VA here is VT into D. Now let us see the current here. The current here the equation governing equation is VLA the voltage across this is equal to LA DIA by DT the Faraday equation. Now what is VLA potential at this point minus the potential at this point potential at this point is VA minus IARA. VA would be either 0 or VT. So let us say when this is on, it will be VT minus IARA on the one side. On the other side, it is EB minus EB. So I can write as VT minus IARA minus EB is proportional to omega. So I will say K omega. So this would be the relationship. Integrating this would give me IA. Now let us say Ra is very small, negligible, then it will be Vt minus K omega or Vt minus Eb. As omega is rotating with mechanical time constant, there is inertia J. This is not going to vary quickly, as quickly as the electrical, uh, electrical parameters like the current because the electrical time constant is very fast. So Vt is fairly constant. EB is also fairly constant for the period TS. So therefore VT minus K omega is sufficiently constant. I will say this is rising. The current IA will rise with a slope of VT minus EB by o LA. Omega I am taking it as varying very slowly compared to the electrical parameters and RA is almost negligible. So during the time when it is off, this is zero. It is only EB which is coming across LA. So it is minus EB by LA. So this one is minus EB by LA. So at this slope it goes. So let's say this is the current, the armature current that is flowing through the um, motor. So this current value, I can adjust up and down by controlling the duty cycle. So if the duty cycle is small, then the IA value will be small. If the duty cycle is high, then the IA value will be high. So this can go up and down. So by controlling IA, I am controlling torque because torque is proportional to IA in a DC motor. And by, control, by adjusting IA, I have adjusted TD. So if you adjust TD, then the speed gets modified. And the speed gets modified the pressure difference across the inlet or outlet gets modified and therefore the flow rate. So this is how you control the flow rate by adjusting uh, the duty cycle here. And the EB is proportional to omega as I so, uh, told here. So the omega is actually acting as in opposition to IA and this in the steady state will se settle to some value and VT minus EB we are taking that into account. Vt minus Eb by LA is what will determine the 
current. So in this way, adjusting this duty cycle will adjust the average value of VA, which is which will become dVt, which in turn will adjust the value of IA flowing through this. IA flowing through this will affect TD, which will affect omega and so on. So the omega will affect the pressure difference across the pump, which will affect the flow rate. So this is how the centrifugal pump is interfaced to the PV, uh, PV cell or PV module and this is how it operates.